Hello dear friends, let us understand today about GDM, its causes and diagnosis in the first part of the series on GDM. Diabetes mellitus or also called diabetes is a condition in which too much glucose stays in the blood instead of being used for energy. A lot of health problems can occur when the blood sugar is too high. Some women can develop diabetes during pregnancy and this condition is called gestational diabetes. Women with gestational diabetes or GDM need to take special care both during and after the pregnancy. What causes this gestational diabetes? It, does it happen to all women who are pregnant? So let us understand that the body produces a hormone which is called insulin and that keeps the blood sugar in the normal range. During pregnancy, the higher levels of the pregnancy hormone can interfere with the insulin. Usually, body is able to make more insulin to keep this blood sugar normal. But in some women, body cannot make enough insulin during pregnancy and so the blood sugar levels go up. This leads to gestational diabetes or GDM. Now the question is, if someone develops a GDM, will they always have diabetes? So that is not the case. Usually GDM does go away after childbirth, but some women who are at higher risk of developing diabetes later in life. So women should make sure that they do an annual every year sugar testing. Sometimes women would have had a mild diabetes before pregnancy and they would not be knowing that. So then that is diabetes mellitus and that may not go after pregnancy and may be a lifelong condition. Now, who are going to be at risk of gestational diabetes or GDM? There are several risk factors which are linked to uh, GDM. Sometimes it can also occur in women with no risk factors. But you should remember that uh, women who are overweight or obese, physically inactive, we measure the BMI, so if the BMI is more than 30, or if there has been a GDM in the previous pregnancy, or they have had a very large baby, a big baby, more than 3.5 or 4 kgs in the previous pregnancy, if they have had high blood pressure, if there is a history of heart disease, if they have had PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome, these women would be at high risk of uh, developing a GDM during pregnancy. How does GDM affect a pregnant woman? So when a woman has GDM, her body is going to pass through the placenta more sugar to the fetus than the baby needs. And when there is too much of sugar for the baby, the baby gains a lot of weight and baby becomes very big. And that would mean that there are more problems for the mother, which could be difficulty during the labor, maybe increased risk of cesarean delivery. Because of the big baby, there could be heavy bleeding after delivery. There could also be tears in the vagina or uh, during the vaginal birth, there would be need to use an instrument like a forceps or a vacuum. Also, for the mother also, there could be a risk because women could develop uh, other conditions like so there's something called preeclampsia or high blood pressure during pregnancy. It is in fact twice as common in somebody with GDM. So this means there would be extra stress on the heart and the kidneys and so women have to be careful. But the good thing is that not all women are going to develop the complications. So the important thing is that the woman has to keep her sugar level under control and do the regular monitoring of the sugar levels and also follow a proper diet. How this GDM affects the baby? So babies usually they may do well, but sometimes babies can have difficulty in breathing. Babies can have jaundice after birth. Sometimes baby have low sugar at birth. And if the baby is big, sometimes there is something called birth trauma, like baby will be delivered, but there may be difficulty in delivering of the shoulders. And these large babies may need extra care in the NICU or the neonatal unit. Also, sometimes there is an increased risk of stillbirth or death in the womb. So that is why we test all mothers for GDM and all pregnant women are screened for GDM. Uh, usually we do the testing first time when you come for the visit also, the sugar testing is done. And again at 20 to 24 weeks, 
a glucose tolerance test is done in which sugar glucose is given and then the blood test is measured either after one hour or two hour so that we are able to diagnose any diabetes in pregnancy. So this is usually done between 24 and 28 weeks of pregnancy. That is the glucose tolerance.